Ah. Are we recording? Yes, we're recording. We are recording. All right, so I want to make stick baits. That is what I want to do. I just think that stick baits are a beautiful lure. That's what I think. Personal opinion, uh, I think they are the most beautiful lure that is out there. Um, and I want to start making them all the time. I just think that they are the coolest lure uh, in comparison to some stuff that we have readily available. I don't think that we have too many stick baits that are out there. The way that it fishes, the way that it looks, the things you can catch on it. Um, this is a tuna bait. I want to make them for tuna and striped bass. That's where I really want to try to evolve this over and then I kind of want to just make it the shapes and the dimensions and the sizes that I like. I've started to make a couple of these. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a grueling process to say the least. Uh, they're not easy to make at all. Um, I think they're coming out good. We're not quite there yet but it's definitely a cool process and it's something that I've enjoyed doing. There's something about a stick bait that is just it's just awesome. There's such a cool lure and the way that these guys are fishing them is just dude it's like mesmerizing like it's such a cool way to fish and it's such a cool action that gets produced on the surface and just below the surface that like I'm very attracted to that style of fishing. And it's something that I can't, I don't really have readily available. Um, so I want to start making them. Uh, I want to start building stick baits and I want to start testing them and trying to catch not only striped bass, but also tuna on these lures. So I'm pretty excited about it. I think that anybody that has surf casted or fished long enough will hold a lure and say, you know what? I think I can make a better one of those. It's like, I know that I had that thought process for very, very early on where I grabbed a lure and I said, you know what, I can make one of these. And I think that thought process goes hand in hand with a lot of people's idea of like, I really like to make something and then catch a fish on it. And that's like kind of how I felt. Like I couldn't wait to catch a fish on a lure that I made. Um, so that, is where it kind of started. And then I started looking at like, how do I do this? I have a lot of the tools. I had a lathe, um, or I still have a lathe. Uh, I went to school for art, so I knew how to paint and I knew how to use colors. Uh, I had an airbrush already. Um, I've worked with epoxies. I had a full wood shop. I was like, this, this looks pretty easy. So I started to kind of go down the rabbit hole and I made, one of my first lures that I ever made was just a regular pencil popper. Uh, through wire construction, tail wrapped, belly hook swivel. Uh, it was like my first lure, you know what I mean? And I made a whole bunch of them. So I actually sold some of these things. Uh, I think some of you guys might have bought them. Some people hit me up on Instagram and bought them directly through there. So I appreciate that. Um, and I really liked making them. Um, it was a lot of fun, but it was a very, very difficult process. It is not easy. It's not easy to get it perfect, is what I'll say. And I am an OCD perfectionist. Like if you look at the rods I've built, they are there's not a thread out of line, right? Like I will take the extra time to build a higher quality rod so that I know that it's perfect. That's not the way that everybody needs to think, it's just the way that I think. So to get a perfect lure, I mean perfect eyes, perfect nose, perfect tail wrap, perfect through wire, the whole thing. To get a lure perfect, it is a very, very difficult process. Um, especially if you talk about production and producing a lot of them, it's very difficult. And I think that's why a lot of people end up, you know, failing before they end up getting started. So I know that I'm ranting a little bit about this, but basically I made lures in the past um, I enjoyed doing it. And now I've always had this idea in the back of my head of there's a better lure out there that can be made. Um, I don't wanna say it's like the perfect lure, but I've always wanted to do something around this particular type of lure ever since I saw one. They're really big in Australia. 
um, and they're catching GT, they're catching tuna, they're catching, you know, all kinds of species right from the shore. And it's an amazing, they make some amazing looking lures out there. I actually think that the bait that they're making for saltwater is light years ahead of what we're doing in the States, um, personally. And I know that I'm gonna rub a lot of people the wrong way, but I think that the lures that are made and the baits that are made here are not even close to the lures and the baits that are made over there. I look at some Instagram pages and I'm like blown away by what I see. By what I see. So ever since I kind of started looking into these, I really, I can't get it out of my head. And I kind of started to dive back in as I started to get back into YouTube, I kind of started to dive back into the lure making side of things. And I started to spark this idea of like, let's make a stick bait. There's really not that many stick baits around. Um, a couple companies that do them, Strategic Angler does them. Um, but even that, there's really not that many around that, that make them. And I'm sure you can get some production ones, like you could find something from Shimano or Daiwa or whatever. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about like high, high quality lures. I believe, and I think everybody's gonna have a different definition of what a high quality lure is. I think first and foremost, the lure needs to be 100% sealed. So no hole through the end where you would cap it off, right? Where, or a belly hole where water can eventually get inside, soak the lure and change the weight and change the buoyancy. So I've always been a huge fan of doing fully sealed lures. This lure is one of my favorite lures that I've ever made. I call it the duck. Uh, it's 100% fully sealed, right? So everything tail to nose to belly is 100% fully sealed. One single giant treble hook down the bottom. I've never thrown this lure because I like it so much. Uh, it's just like a showpiece for me now, but this is something that I believe to be higher quality than your standard stuff that's out there. And I know, right, believe me, I know that I'm gonna rub probably some people the wrong way, especially if you have like a favorite lure and it's, you know, built the way that I'm, I'm not trying to upset anybody. I'm just trying to talk about, like if I were to make the perfect lure for me, this is how I would make it. It would be 100% fully sealed. It would have upgraded through wire. Um, it would have the highest quality eyes. It would have a great paint job. Uh, and for me, what I really have an interest in making just because I don't see them as readily avail available is stick baits. Um, I'm not talking about needlefish, I'm talking about stick baits. So, and there's different ways that you can fish them and different ways that you can make them, but really they're basically a stick that looks like a bait. Like that's really all it is. But some of the action that can be created out of them and some of the ways that these guys are fishing them over in Australia and, and probably around here too is just a different kind of action and it's something that I'm really, really drawn to. So now I'm kind of on this quest to make this, this, this perfect stick bait, higher quality than all the rest, um, have the best paint jobs, the best kind of lures, like I, I have this thought in my head of making them. So what I wanna do is I wanna to start to bring you guys along for the ride here. Uh, I have some footage of me making them. It's been about two weeks of trying to dial these things in and how we're gonna do it, but I'm starting to kind of narrow down the process and figure this out a little bit. Um, they're just a really cool bait.
it is. That's the first one. Didn't come out too bad. I think I'm gonna shape it at least. See what it looks like once it's all done shaping. But definitely learned a couple things on this one. I'm gonna do for the next ones. So I think it needs to be bigger. I definitely think it needs to be bigger. All right, it's day two. Got a decent amount done yesterday. I was able to get the main profile cut, figure out some of the through wire, but this is basically what I've got going on. It's too small. I think this is gonna be a perfect like striper plug. This is, I think this is seven and a half inches. Yeah, I think this is seven and a half inches. It's like a perfect striper lure, but we're after tuna hardtails. So this is a little bit small and the tail is a little bit too thin. So I went back to the drawing board last night, did a bunch of designs, thickened up the tail a little bit, changed a couple other things. And now I think that we're gonna try, I'm still gonna make a seven and a half inch, but I think we're gonna try an eight inch and an eight and a half inch before we go real crazy and try some other stuff, but this is basically what I've got going on. So today we're gonna try a couple other designs, glue them up, and then I wanna start shaving them down and shaping them. So I just did like a really rough shave on this just to kind of like figure out my chamfer edges, but this is just like a test piece. But it's still pretty cool and I really like it. I really love the design, like this teardrop wicked nice clean profile i prefer i would like the small little thin tail personally that's why i think like i don't know if i want to change this for the striper plugs but tuna i just feel like this has to be a little bit thicker so that's pretty much it we'll see uh we'll see what we can do today so the first thing that we did is we basically started with a block of uh, uh, with a block of wood right and then I would cut this down the middle. I would split it. This is to get the through wire. Normally on a normal lure, right? Like a pencil popper, you would just drill a hole through each end, make them meet up, and then you'd be able to send a through wire through it. With these, I want a fully sealed lure. So we were splitting them. I was, I was splitting them down the middle, breaking them in half. Then I would actually glue them back together, right? So we would basically split them down the middle, super glue them back together. Then I would take my shape or my pattern and I would cut those out, right? So then I would have this cut out, right? Sanded, cleaned up, but now it's split down the middle. I would then break this lure in half, right? So now I popped it in half. I would add my through wire, right? Dremel it out or squeeze it together, get my through wire inside of here, and then glue this back together. So that now, I have a 100% fully sealed lure with a through wire already in it. And now it's 100% sealed. Then the labor comes into play. This is not like something I can just throw on my lathe. These pencil poppers, I could pump out, you know, I actually have a, I actually have a duplicator, so it just duplicates a pattern and I can make them very, very quickly and, and mass produce them. With these, you can't really do that because it's not on a lathe and the shape of a stick bait is actually uh, not symmetrical. So for that reason, now we gotta carve them. So I would then carve, or I would then cut my overall main shape right or my second shape which would then be this guy this guy right so then i'd have this so then i'd cut that second shape and now i've got what looks more like a lure right so after that is when we would start to shape them we'd chisel these down and i would shape this down right we do one side and then slowly get the next side, right? Now we're starting to smooth it out and make it look like a lure, right? You could add your eyes. This one's fully sealed, uh, but to do this on mass production and to produce a bunch of these, like if you guys ever wanted one of these, I, like it would, 
I'm not taking anything away from wood, it, it just takes so long. And there are some serious disadvantages to making this out of wood that you don't have with other products. So the goal was to get away from wood. That's my main goal. And I am no stranger to the fact that a lot of people like, and myself included, love wood lures, right? There's something to be said about a handcrafted wooden lure catching a monster fish. There's something to be said about that, and I love that. Don't get me wrong, but there's also, if I'm talking about building the highest quality lure I could ever build, I would never use wood. I just wouldn't. And I know, right, you guys can crucify me in the comments, I know, right, that there are people out there that will argue till they're blue in the face that wood is the best. I get it. To me, it's not. If it gets waterlogged, it's gonna change the buoyancy. So I can't control, right? I, I can't control the buoyancy over a long period of time. I could have two of the exact same blocks, right? This one and this one came from the same exact company, kiln dried the whole nine, right? Two different blocks of wood. I can already feel that this one is lighter than this one. So before I even, get it in the water, the buoyancy is probably different. So now to create a lure and have it consistently fish the same way every single time, my, my, my buoyancy and my density is, is different, right? Before I even get it wet, before I even carve or cut, it's already different. So that's another thing that I can't control. Then, like I said, if it gets waterlogged, that changes the buoyancy again. These will break down. I have lures that are just shredded from fish and from rocks and from you know, being beaten on that it breaks down over time. So now it's not gonna last as long, right? Again, I love wooden lures, but from a material standpoint, like we've evolved, right? Like we don't build boats out of wood anymore for a reason. It's like, yeah, they were great boats. They lasted a long time. Don't get me wrong. The Nina and the Pinta, you know, got from point A to point B but we don't build them out of that anymore, right? We use different materials so that they're gonna last a lot longer and can take more abuse. So I always like the idea of doing resin poured lures. I think that, you know, uh, it's gonna last a lot longer. Um, they can take more abuse and I can control the density before I ever pour a lure. So that's where I really started to get into the idea of resin pouring a lure. Um, hello? God damn it. People are always trying to get me to sign up for their charter, charter booking services. I just really like the idea of doing a resin poured lure. I think the material is gonna be 10 times better. So the goal is to make a master of these lures, right? So to make one lure that's absolutely perfect, then we'll make a mold of it and then we'll be able to cast it and, and actually make this and control the buoyancy based on the different mixtures to then be able to produce a lure that has a higher production value because it can be the same every single time. Nothing's gonna change. My buoyancy will always be the same. The shape will always be the same. It will always fish the same. And that's why, you know, higher, you know, that's why commercial lures are all the same and they're done that way. Um, that said, I still feel like this is all handcrafted. You know what I mean? Like that's the goal. So we're gonna make a master of the lure and then we're going to make a mold of that lure. Once we have it perfect, we're gonna dial it in and then we're gonna start to produce them and I'm gonna paint them and, and epoxy them and, and finish them. Um, but that's kind of the goal is to like start making higher quality lures. I have a lure in my head and the way that I want it designed and the way that I want it to look that I've always, envisioned a lure to look like like every time i pick up a lure i'm always like man that thing's you know this is a great lure but i wish the eyes were like this or i wish this was like that you know what i mean i wish the tail was like this it's too fat here why does the belly shape like this this doesn't even look like a fish half the lures out there don't even look like fish you know and i'm i'm the first one to say you can catch a you can catch a fish with, uh, with a carrot and treble hooks like you know, I'm, I'm definitely one to say that, but at the same time, it's like to make a lure, I want that thing to be mm, sexy, just perfectly streamlined. You know what I mean? Just a wicked clean looking bait. I want you to pick up my bait and say, wow, that thing is perfect. You know what I mean? And it looks beautiful. And then when it swims, I want it to swim perfect. So like OCD is taking over and I'm beginning to build more and more baits and like really dial in what I want it to look like. So like we've had 
quite a few iterations of it um, already. I've obviously made, I've made a bunch of pencil poppers in the past. Uh, these ones are sealed, unsealed, primed and ready to go. Um, these are all my stick baits that pretty much have through wire, ready to go, ready to carve. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's kind of like, it's almost like this was the design that I kind of looked at, which is like, this is like a knockoff, like Rapala, but it's a, just a cool looking bait. You know, when it comes to this, that's kind of what I was looking at. And then this was like the shape and the design that I came up with that I just really thought was just a, just a sexy looking bait. You know, that, that classic teardrop design there's no like there's like i want the lines i want this line to be perfectly seamless so like no like random belly section here i just want this to be very seamless perfect fast back look off the top this design i know it's only two lines but it has taken me weeks now to, to finalize and finish this design and it's just a really clean look and it's a, just an awesome lure i just love them you know what i mean i just think they're so cool looking and just so there's something about those lures that i have an obsession with so i figured why not bring you guys along and show you kind of my process and what we're doing um and then if it's something that you like you know what i mean let me know down below and and we'll we'll kind of like go from there i definitely would not mind sending some of these to a few of you guys to try them and let me know what you think try to catch a fish on them you know i would love to send these out maybe do a giveaway of some kind where i can give some of these lures out um and kind of get them out there uh and see how you guys like them you know what i mean so the goal is to, to change and be different and also change and be different with the way that we fish them. You know what I mean? It's not, I don't really want a lure that just gets casted out and retrieved in. That's okay, I want it to be able to do that, but I also want the action. I want it to be able to sweep these. I want to be able to change the way that we, we use top water lures. I want to be able to get these lures that can be fished top water to also then go subsurface. Uh, maybe make them heavy and get them down below. There's two species that I want to target these lures for. The number one is tuna. I want to make tuna stick baits. No questions asked. I also want to then be able to shrink this down and change a couple things and then make this into a striper bait so that we can fish stick baits for stripers more as well. But the goal is tuna. I really want to make tuna baits, but I also definitely want it to also be applicable for striped bass. From there, what I would like to do is take that same lure and be able to segment it. Make segmented and also then make it into a magic swimmer like lure. So uh, an actual swim bait style lure is something that I'd like to do as well. A little bit more difficult because I am not injection molding these uh, the way that these are done, but I do think that I could then take a lure, you know, that I made, cut it into sections, and then make it into a better looking uh, swimming lure. Um, I do have that idea brewing around. And then from there, painting them, finishing them, the whole nine. So like, I know that this video is a little bit of a rant and it's kind of going in all different directions, but it's more so to just be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I would love to make some content around this stuff. I would love for you guys to see it. I'd love to hear your, your thoughts, your, your experiences, see if it's something that you guys like. And then if anybody wants to try them, you know, I'd love to do some kind of a giveaway or something like that. You can get in contact with me um, and we can get some of these out there once they're made and we can start, start playing with them. So it'll be pretty cool. Um, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, comments, concerns, let me know down below. As always, thanks so much. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't done it yet. I'm trying to produce as much content as possible. Um, and as always, thank you. Have a good one, guys.